This week in Africa, countries report their first cases of the new coronavirus and start body temperature screenings for travellers. Netflix launches its first original series produced in Africa. Black and mixed race South Africans hope to return to Cape Town's iconic District 6, where they were forced out during apartheid. And in Uganda, victims speak of acid attacks that seem much more prevalent than the few cases reported to police. Let's take a look. Four sub-Saharan African countries confirmed their first coronavirus cases. Senegal has registered four cases, all foreign nationals, and South Africa, Nigeria and Cameroon have one case each since the outbreak emerged. Several African countries have enforced body temperature screenings at their airports or tightened entry restrictions in a bid to keep the virus at bay. I think what we have learned from China is that speed, uh, decisiveness and unity of everyone and acting in unison becomes a very important issue. And in this case, we really hope that we will get everyone working with us uh, in dealing with this issue. Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara said he would not run in October's election, ending months of speculation over whether he would seek a third term. Ouattara, first elected in 2010 and then re-elected in 2015, kept Ivorians guessing over his political future, saying last year that he could run if his traditional rivals were also candidates. But that uncertainty was firmly put to rest this week. Je voudrais vous annoncer solennellement que j'ai décidé I would like to solemnly announce that I will not be a candidate in the October 31st, 2020 presidential election and I will transfer power to the younger generation. Mali is reasserting control over its territory with Prime Minister Boubou Sissé's visit to the former rebel stronghold of Kidal this week. The northern town has become emblematic of government failure and the advance of jihadist fighters. Malian soldiers returned to the town last month for the first time in six years. Guinea-Bissau's self-declared president, Umaro Mbalo, and his new prime minister inaugurated a new government, despite an ongoing leadership crisis after disputed polls. A second round presidential vote in December saw opposition leader Domingos Pereira beat Mbalo, who rejected the results. I am convinced that this government will be able to support the people of Guinea-Bissau with an all-round improvement in the social security of its citizens and their property. An emotional stroll down memory lane. As a child, Cassie Morris used to play in these streets. But on the 11th of February 1966, the apartheid regime declared his multiracial neighborhood in Cape Town a whites only area. 50,000 people were forcefully evicted from an area known as District 6. About 300 meters from here was our house, and I can still see the day when the group areas. Ec people came to my grandfather and told him that he had to move. Thousands of families were uprooted and scattered in the outlying townships of Cape Town. After apartheid came to an end in 1994, new laws allowed for land redistribution, but only a few families were taken back to District 6. Shahid Ajad is the community spokesman. He feels the government simply wasn't up to the task. They didn't have the necessary skills nor the ne uh, um, nor the required manpower, nor the infrastructure. And most of all, although there was money, the money was squandered. In 2018, legal representatives for some of the evicted families, led by Shahid, took the government to court and won. The court ordered the government to build 954 homes and relocate the families by 2024. Kasim never thought he'd be able to go home to District 6, but despite the landmark ruling, not everything is resolved. The trauma it is there. It happened already. So it can't be fixed. Even though we're moving back to District 6, that trauma will never, will never leave you. It will still be there. 
But Kasim's partner, Nuran, is more optimistic for the future. I think it will be in some peace. When he goes home, he'll be okay. He'll still be as stubborn, but he'll be okay. Okay. Apartheid has left scars all over South Africa, most visibly in the unequal distribution of land. If done right, the decision to finally allow District 6 residents to return home could be a step towards healing the wounds of past injustices. Twelve years ago, Daniel Casola was a victim of an acid attack. Someone he once considered a friend turned on him out of the blue. Even over a decade later, memories of the attack are still vivid. I knew that this is acid because I have ever heard about people uh, being powered on acid. So at that moment, I felt it, it was too much. My eyes started uh, burning, the skin started burning, paining, missing the Daniel experienced feelings common to many survivors of this horrific form of attack a lack of self-esteem, a near complete loss of trust in other people. With help from his family and following a lot of surgery, he eventually moved to a new place and opened an electronics shop. The NGO and Acid Violence Uganda recorded 42 new attacks in 2018. The youngest victim was just 10 months old. Other horrifying cases include two sisters, aged three and five. But the country's official police records show only four cases in that year. Most attacks do not get reported or processed, either due to fears of reprisal or because victims are too focused on mere survival and recovery. Lynette Gerunji, who herself is a victim of an acid attack, emphasizes the need for a specific law. The first policy we, have, we want to include there is a non-bail policy for us perpetrators. These people shouldn't be bailed out. And it will also come, we need the sentence to be clear. Like, it, it must be clear. If someone has poured acid and it has been, he has been proven guilty, this person must die from prison. According to UK-based NGO Action Aid, women are more often the target of acid attacks than men. It is thought that this has to do with the importance attributed in society to women's physical appearance, a means of controlling their bodies. Jennifer was attacked by a colleague in a fit of jealousy over her successful business. You could not walk. Every time you turn you at home, you have to be in bedroom. You fear people to see you. If people see into you, is fear you. And you, you are crying because of the way you have pain and you look in bad. After the attack, she lost her job because of her appearance. She had to go back to her home village. This mother of four now runs a small shop and a bar to make the ends meet, sleeping in a tiny space behind the shop. Acid attack victims agree legislation needs to be changed. Now these attacks are categorized under the catch-all of assault. If found guilty, some of the perpetrators walk out of the prison before the victim even leaves the hospital treatment. Netflix, the online streaming giant, has launched its first Made in Africa production. Queen Sono, a spy thriller starring South Africa's leading actress Pearl Tusi, premiered in Johannesburg. I've always been the face of a strong black African woman. It's not, uh, it's not new to me, but I'm now representing um, a character on screen who is, uh, I think, reflecting all the women in Africa that are strong black African women. And finally, the Ivorian Football Federation has appointed Patrice Bommel as coach of the national football team. The Frenchman was assistant to Hervé Renard, who led Ivory Coast to victory at the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations. That's all from us this week. Until next week.